Hello everyone, welcome to VLSI Academy. This is 22nd lecture and today we will understand about different type of timing exceptions in a timing path. Alright, let's get started. First of all, by timing exception, we mean when certain paths are not intended to operate according to the default setup or hold behavior assumed by the prime time or any other tool, you should specify those paths as timing exception. Otherwise, your tool might report incorrectly these paths as a violation, but actually it is not a violation as per the design functionality. So, you don't need to optimize such paths. First timing exception we are going to discuss is a false path. False path refers to a timing path which is not required to be optimized for timing as it will never be getting captured in a limited time frame when excited in a normal working situation of the chip. Which means that you don't need to optimize a path which is specified as the false path. In normal scenario, the signal launched from a flip-flop has to get captured at another flip-flop in only one clock cycle. We have talked about this also earlier because this is a setup requirement of the any timing path. However, there are certain scenarios where it does not matter at what time the signal originating from launch flip-flop arrives at the capture flip-flop. The timing path resulting in such scenarios is labeled as false path and is not optimized for the timing. Let us say we have a two flip-flop synchronizer where two flip-flops are placed back to back in each other. This is a configuration where two cascaded flops are there. This is called as two flip-flop synchronizer. And let's assume that this is placed in between two launch and capture flip-flops. So this combination becomes a clock domain crossing combination because there is launch clock which is different from capture flip-flop and there is a synchronizer in between because this is placed to make the synchronization of signals which are coming from different clock frequencies. So the launch clock is of different clock frequencies and capture clock of different clock frequency and the synchronizer in between has a job to synchronize the signal which is traveling from one clock domain to another clock domain. Now in this scenario it is not required to meet timing from launch flip-flop to first stage of the synchronizer that is flop 1. We can consider that the signal coming to flop 1 from flip-flop 1 that is launch flop it is actually a false signal since even if the signal causes the flop 1 to be metastable, it will get resolved before the next clock edge arrives with the success rate that is given by the MTBF of the synchronizer, that is mean time between failure of the synchronizer. So it does not matter the signal traveling from launch flip flop to flop 1 is actually meeting the timing or not. Hence we can specify that path as a false path. This type of false path is known as clock domain crossing. And this does not mean that you whenever see the chain of flip-flops back to back, it will be a false path between those two. Those two flip-flops may be for the pipelining of the logic or maybe something else. So once it is confirmed that there is a synchronizer, then you can specify that signal which is coming from the launch flop to the input of the synchronizer can be specified as false path. To specify such path as false path in the tool, the command is as follows. Set false path hyphen from get clock CLK1 to get clock CLK2. Let's say there is only one path in the design which is having the clock domain crossing. Then you can specify like this. It will take all the clock paths which are in CLK1 going to CLK2 will set as false path. Let us take one more example for better understanding. This is the false path for static signal example. Here suppose you have a structure as shown here. Now in this structure you have two modes and the path to multiplexer output is actually dependent upon the input pins which are two different modes. However in order to cover timing for both of the modes you have to keep the mode select bit that is pin of mode select bit unconstrained. This means it will result in a path being formed through the multiplexer select bit also. You can keep this bit as false path through the select pin of the multiplexer as this is a static signal and it will be static in both of the modes. So there is let's say there is no special requirement related to the mode transition on this signal. So we specify the false path on mode select bit of this multiplexer. Let us take one more example where false path can occur by the architecture also. So let's take an example where we have one uh, multiplexer where two input paths are there and there is a select pin in the multiplexer. Let's say there is one more multiplexer and here also there is path 
which is coming from some other place input path 3 and input path 4 there is output pin also and these both we assume that the select pin of these both is connected together and let's say there is a combo logic in between which is coming to input path 4 pin and that combo logic is actually driven by output pin of this multiplexer now let's take this example now in this example let us consider that there is a timing arc being formed like this so by architecture if you see this let's say is 0 and this is 1 and let's say this is 0 and this is 1 and if your select mode bit if it is 0 so both of the path input path 1 and input path 3 would be selected in both of the multiplexers let's say if your mode select bit is 1 so input path 2 to input path 4 these both are selected but there is no possibility that there will be a path from input path 1 to input path 4 because if mode select bit is 0 then input path 1 is selected and 3 is selected 4 is not selected so there is no path that can go from input path 1 to input path 4 or let's say if mode select bit is 1 then there is no possibility that input path 2 to input path 3 can be formed uh, a path can be formed like this so there is no possibility like this in this example this yellow highlighted arc is not possible by architecture itself so this is a false path which goes from input path 1 to input path 4 so we this is one example of input path false path by architecture that's all for this video we hope we have given you sufficient examples to understand what is false path we will see other timing exceptions in further videos then we will also see some more concepts in static timing analysis in further videos please like share and subscribe to the channel and please don't forget to give your important feedback in the comment section thank you